Hey everyone, Fuse Man coming at ya. A few months back, we had a series here on the channel taking a look at MetaMask with WebXR. And one of the most popular requested follow ups was around smart contract integration. So, in this video, as well as the next video, we're gonna be taking a look exactly at that. So, this part one is gonna be about how you can get a smart contract deployed onto the blockchain. And in part two, which will be next week, make sure you're subscribed for that, will be about once you have that deployed, how can you interact with it within Unity? If you do have questions or have comments for follow-up videos, definitely let me know down in the comments below, or also head over to our Discord where you can engage with the rest of the community that is interested in blockchain and VR and Unity and gaming. Here you're seeing the Fuse Z token that I randomly went ahead and got deployed and you can actually check my MetaMask and see that I put in this custom token here for MetaMask, minted myself 10 FZ tokens and that's exactly what we're going to be taking a look at. What is the smart contract? How can you get that up and running? In our case, we're going to be taking a look at a web tool called Remix that is identically the same thing as Visual Studio Code but it's kind of lightweight and for our purposes since we're writing a very kind of small short co smart contract it fits our need and in fact what you're seeing right here on the screen is that smart contract traditionally when you kind of log into remax you might see this but you have a workspace that's dedicated to you on the side here that's pretty much handles all of your scripts and a lot of pre-built scripts here so if we open up a couple of these so you can see there are scripts for storage, there are scripts for ownership, there's a voting system as a smart contract. So I definitely encourage you to read these as examples. But in our case, what I went ahead and did is simply created a new file and you can name it whatever you want. So we can call this like test.soul, really doesn't matter. Actually, in our case, I, I just wanted to show you how that happened. I created something called token.soul. What token.soul is, is a very simple smart contract. You can see here, this is everything we need to define a token that runs on the Ethereum blockchain. And it's really not that complicated. The majority of this code is located here and is published by a group called Open Zeppelin. And if you go directly to this link, it'll take you to this GitHub page. This is the actual ERC20 token implementation. What ERC20 is, is basically just a standard for creating tokens on Ethereum. This contains all of the code that is really responsible for what's driving us. But for our purposes, we're going to assume a, a lot of this code base, but the, there are plenty of standards for creating tokens and NFTs. If you have uh, a desire for NFTs, definitely let me know down in the comments below. But the the point here is that we can take the standard inherit from it make some slight modifications which I, I'll, I'll show in just a second and then you have your own actual token created on the blockchain but if we quickly go ahead and take a look at this we have a lot of the protocols defined at the top of this smart contract so the balances that are saved for all of the users of our smart contract. So that's just a hash map. You, there's an allowance field, there's a total supply. So if you wanna keep a hard cap on things, you have your name, symbol, and decimals. And that's everything you really need to define a token. The rest here is of course our constructor and then various different functions that are part of our smart contract. And it's definitely encourage anyone who's getting started with smart contracts in Ethereum to, to take a look at this as I think it helps you get a broad understanding of how an actual token or any smart contract is really written. And I, I don't claim to be an expert myself. I'm just kind of building off of the, the giants, if you will, that have made all of this accessible here on GitHub. But anyway, so using Remix, we're gonna go ahead and import this file in. You can see where inheriting from that function or the, this class here that's called ERC20. So we're inheriting from the contract and we just have to define our own contract parameters. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and provide the few defaults here. So you could call this like fused VR if I wanted to create a new one and you could give it a different token name. And in fact, that's the token symbol that was imported in here by MetaMask because I didn't even have to define it since it's part of the standard. And 
then you can set up some any additional parameters. So in this case, as part of the contract, we're going to, on construction of our smart contract, we're gonna set up how many decimal places we want our smart contract to have. If we go to the second line here, which is regarding printing or minting, actually in this case, what we're saying is we're going to mint to the person who creates the contract 10 tokens times the number of decimal points. And the reason for this is because we don't have a actual floating decimal representation within our smart contract, but we just have integers. But by basically inflating the total supply by the decimal point value, which is basically by taking 10 to the power of the number of decimals and we create that many tokens, that is what's going to allow us to define the actual representation as a big sum value uh, of the number of tokens. So for example, if I had say a decimal of two in this case, this is gonna be 10 to the power of two, which is 100. And we're gonna create for, so one token can be actually represents 100 virtual tokens, if you will. And so if I only had one of these virtual tokens, I would have 0 0.01 of the total supply. So that, that's kind of the idea of how they're representing floats as, as decimal integer values in this context. So that, that's kind of the standard of how ERC-20 does it. And in this case, that, that's basically why we have to multiply 10 times 10 to the power of the number of decimals. And if you just wanted to end your smart contract there, you I pretty much have a custom smart contract with a new name, a new total supply, and a new symbol. But that's not really that exciting. And quite frankly, that, that was kind of the, the craze of really 2017, 2018, where there was a lot of new token sales that didn't really mean much. But that beside the point, we also have just for testing purposes here, a new mint function. What this will allow us to do is go ahead, send a written request to the smart contract to mint to whoever sends a transaction to us mint them a thousand of the of the supply. Uh, so you could divide this by a, a hundred here. So you're basically minting yourself a token is really all that is happening in this context. So that's it. That's our smart contract. And using Remix, we can conveniently go ahead and compile our smart contract using whatever specifications here that are kind of built into the browser. It's literally as simple as you click compile and you will have a basically compiled version of your smart contract, which is amazing, right? And in fact, if we head over to our artifacts, you can see the compiled versions of our smart contract. And once we have it compiled, you can then head over to the deploy and run section. So for example, if I wanted to go ahead and deploy my smart contract to this London instance here, you could totally do that and 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 get that deployed. Um, we would have to select the contract. So let's go back here. I'm gonna select the contract. And then we have to pick the contract and then we go ahead and deploy it. That'll go ahead and get that up into the London test bed that they have there. But that's not really accessible by any other means. So what I would suggest to do is go ahead and run this with the injected web three. And that will allow you to actually get your smart contract deployed to the actual any any wherever right so this could be the ethereum mainnet it could be robston it could be anything that you want so if i actually go ahead here i'm gonna go ahead and switch or refresh just to reload up everything you can see since i have my metamask logged in on this injected web 3 i can deploy to my own metamask uh, you can define whatever values you want for the deploying, and then you can actually deploy. That'll spin up a MetaMask transaction for you to actually confirm and deploy it. But since I already have this created, we don't need to do that. But of course, if you want to on any of the test beds, or if, of course, if you want to on the main night, you could totally do that as well. But you give that a few seconds, and that'll eventually get itself deployed onto the actual um, Ethereum network. And so that's really, really powerful in and of itself. Once you have that deployed, you could see here with the London virtual machine, this is what you'll ultimately get. So a bunch of functions with the address associated with that actual contract that is officially deployed in that network. 
If you've gone ahead and deployed your contract onto the Robson network here, you should now have that deployed with an Etherscan. And if you put the contract address in, you'll actually see all of the events associated with that. So you can see right here, just a couple events that I did while testing it. You have the binary associated for that, as well as any events that might have been triggered on that specific contract. That covers getting your smart contract deployed onto the blockchain. And now that it's on the blockchain, we can start to explore how to interact with it through Unity. So make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss that notification once that video goes live, or also head over to Discord where you can interact with the rest of the community that is interested in blockchain and VR. So thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. It's been Fuse Man and I'm signing out.